Welcome! E aí, galera, beleza? Bem-vindo à nossa comunidade. Welcome to our community. Hey, what's going on, guys? It is OGC here. Welcome to today's video. Today, we have a super special video. We are doing an interview, and this is an interview with a friend of the channel and a, uh, an amazing player, in my humble opinion. Uh, possibly a super well that does not identify as a super well. Uh, so, with us, with a brand new setup type of thing on your screen, we have the one and only Mr. Tain. So, Mr. Tain, do you want to introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about you? Uh, hey everybody, my name is Jonathan, I play Art of Conquest, and most of you know me as Taint in game. That, that's awesome, so what, what we did was uh, we put up a Facebook poll on the OGC fa Facebook page, um, and we got some questions from, from you guys, the community. So we're going to ask Taint the uh, top 10 questions that came up, and there were only 10, so this worked out perfect. So the first one oh, is cool. from... Uh, the first one is from Can, and it says, what is the best race? Um, I think the most versatile race right now for all aspects of the game is probably Dwarf. Oh, wow. I'm also probably partial because I play Dwarf. But, no, I think for Void, in the higher stages, PvP, most events and sieging, Dwarf is probably at the top right now. Gotcha. I mean, what, what, what would you say is second? Is, is Lich second, or would you put humans there? Lich. Lich, definitely Lich. Gotcha. I think Lich, I think Lich and Dwarf are very comparable for utility and void, PvP, sieging, events, everything. I think Lich and Dwarf are the top two. I think they're very comparable. I think it's more of a, a playstyle preference than one being better than the other. And question number two comes from a community member named uh, Mattel, and I'm probably butchering all of these names. So uh, Mattel said uh, they do not have a true ruby. Would you put Infectious Wound on Nora or Basrix? Yeah, so if you're doing, yeah, Infected Wound, Hero, a bonus, critical hit five, critical hit six, uh, bonus upon scoring a critical, yeah, Basrix, 100%. Because every third attack, every third basic attack is a guaranteed critical with Basrix, so I would definitely go with Basrix. He's, he's always going to get the proc off of this prism and get maximum value. All right, so for the next question, this next one is, is off the beaten path a little bit, and it might have to do with Magic Magic the Gathering. Uh, this, one was <laughs> <laughs> this one was added by uh, uh, OGC for some reason, and it says, mono blue control deck the best. And I, I guess we can include, like, all the way back to Legacy. So I play Commander right now, which is, like, the best format in Magic. And I play, my, my favorite deck is a four-color control deck. It's every color but red. It's uh, Thrasios uh, and Timna, partner commanders, and it's extremely strong. It's a good good deck. If you play Magic, <laughs> holler at your boy. All right, Ian, this next question is added by Mark Taylor, who said, uh, do you think pay to win is getting out of hand right now? As somebody who is pay to win and I spend a fair amount of money on the game, I can agree that the, the pay-to-win tempo is a little excessive right now. The, I, think, the, I think content has been a little too clustered and a little too close together. And the lack of pay of like the, the free-to-play like events where you get like free spins or free options every day for logging in need to come back. Like they're, they're too far between compared to pay-to-win. In, so it, it's not necessarily an, an issue of the content or pay to win element. It's it's just that it's not spread out enough. Yeah, it's the frequency. They, they're like they did the dragon armor thing, which was cool. Like I like the dragon armor thing. It's fine, but the fact that it was a hundred percent pay to win and you didn't get anything for free from it, like you couldn't get free tickets to save up. Or you know, save the armor that you actually managed to roll for to for the next time. I think was a flaw. I think that should have. I think anything that you got, anything that you've paid money into, whether or not you complete the event or not, you should retain all of it, and it should carry over to the next event. Gotcha. And I, I think a lot of people would would enjoy that because, um, yeah, it it makes logical sense to to the consumer of, of the game. Yeah, if you're playing on a budget. It might take you three months of collecting the pieces to get the dragon armor, but if you have to try and save up to do it all in one go, it's not realistic for 90% of the players. So if you 
spend 10, you know, 10, $20 each time it comes up and you unlock a new piece each time, it might take you four months, but it's not as such a burden to try to do it all at one time. That, that makes total sense. And that, that would make it a little bit more uh, approachable for, for a lot of people. Yes. And the whales and the people who spend, they're going to get it all at once, no matter what the options are. But this is a way to make it friendlier and more approachable from the free to play or middle spenders or low spender like price points. Gotcha. So th this actually goes into our, our next question, which I, I, I added because uh, it's none of our business to ask about financial stuff. So uh, I added in the question to kind of sum all that up and say, are you a free to play player? <laughs> that is a definite. <laughs> I am not a free to play player. But 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 you're close to a free to play player. To put it in perspective, I've gone from eight million core power. Actually, no, back in May, I want to say no, April of this year, I was five thousand k core. I am eighty six hundred k now in August. That, so not not free to play. Not not even close. <laughs> no. And for for the 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 next question, uh, which was um, added by. OGC, um, why are you dwarf? Uh, especially as there's more and more li lich coming up, uh, especially higher tiers in in the dual tower. Why why are you dwarf? Why are you still dwarf? Um, I just like dwarf. I've always liked dwarf, and snipers finally becoming viable and like good made it so you could play dwarf because blasters have been unusable since like two years ago. Basically, once people figured out Cleo could stop the blast off, dwarf blasters were useless and then the advent of the graviton surge on onyx dragons even further made blasters useless but snipers are strong and if you build your gear in your account correctly they are devastatingly good and they're great at siege and they're just also really cool i don't know i like them uh so for our next question uh which is from jack daniel um <clears throat> Greg, my boy and absolutely so he's asking for tips for smart spending. So if, if somebody out there is to spend on, on the game, uh, what, what do you recommend focusing on? I, I know this is kind of loose. There's no budget involved in it, but what, what do you see as a good value? So the things to buy, like if you're going to buy things, uh, in the early stages of the game, if you're buying, don't buy Chakra. There's enough Chakra in the game economy. You can get your like main units to Chakra 15. And realistically, that's all you need to do is get your two PvP units to Shocker 15. Anything after that is extra and not necessary to be competitive. Um, I would invest in your Temple to get to like at least Temple 5, is that unlocks the majority of the useful bonuses, like your research bonuses. There's a build bonus. There's good troop and some dragon bonuses also. Um, and then after that, it would be, it'd be a spread between Draconic, Troop Armor and the Hero Mastery. I don't think you should focus on one. I think you should evenly spread it out like a little at a time. That way you're more balanced. Because you'll notice like when you fight, like myself, when I fight like some of the whales in the tower, I can tell which accounts are legacy accounts that have massive temples, but they've not invested in any of the new content to the same degree. I don't have a problem finding them. But the other whale accounts that have, that are more more balanced, like they still have a, a fairly large temple, but they've bought you know a moderate amount of the newer things and have balanced it out. They are a challenge to fight. So so for the uh, for the next question, this was added by uh, Samuel, and Samuel asks, uh, "What's the best pay to win of events?" Uh, and they're referring to um, things such as the lucky wheel dice events. Um, uh, etc so what, what's your thoughts on this when to do uh different ones and what what to do all right so as a new player in the game i think dice board is probably your best bet because getting a true ruby is like highest priority you need to get a true ruby so i would do dice board unlock your first true ruby and then after that i would probably do lucky wheel because lucky wheel is going to give you chakra it's going to give you troop armor equipment stuff. It's going to give you the artifact materials for the pay-to-win artifacts, which some of them are mm. crucial to the gameplay. You have to have them to be competitive. 
And then, of course, like the skins or whatever, like the, the other things on the wheel are vastly more important than the skin. People get hung up on the skin, but hitting good good modifiers on like rune stones, the troop equipment, even even EXP cards now, hitting the 600k EXP cards is huge. Because like right now, trying to level my heroes to level 69 and catch up the other ones to 64, I am completely tapped out of EXP. All right, Ian, for this next question, this is also from Jack Daniel. Um, and he said, if allowed to start from the beginning or if you started over, what's one thing that you would do uh, totally different? So this is something that I preach all the time about, especially in like the community chats and game that you have set up. Do not use your building rush on buildings. Only use rush on buildings research you will finish all of your buildings years before you could ever finish all of the research do not waste your research on buildings it is the biggest mistake you can make i fought a level 50 in tower the other day a lich player from one of the chinese houses he rushed to level 50 didn't have enough dragon glass to level up his dragon to level 60 none of his heroes or level 70. He had a few 69s. I'm level 49 and I have three troop type or hero types to level 69 and I smoked them. I, I had one sniper die. I almost flawless him. And it goes to show and further proves my point that research is king. Do not rush your castle. Rush your research. Ne next question is not on the, the list, uh, but it, it goes into... The last question, uh, very well. This one is from OG Seagirl, and uh, she wants to know, what is the prettiest dragon in the game? Emerald. Oh, wow. For sure. Yeah. She I think Emerald, dra Emerald dragons look great, especially with the new dragon armor. They're gorgeous. Yeah, th that blue really goes well with the green. It does. It looks great. So o OG Seagirl said that you got the right answer. I, I guess it was a test. I have no idea. Um, and for for the last question, uh, this one was added by by you or OGC. Um, what is the best dragon in in the game? And if you had to like order them, how how would you like rank them as far as tiers, if that's even possible? I, I get different races, different things. Uh, I think number one is Onyx. The the free crowd control at the start of the battle is just irreplaceable you can't you can't compete with that like it's it that's why the onyx is the best is the free black holes uh after that i think it's a tie between azure and green are tied for second it, and it's strictly because it's race dependent i think dwarf and sylph with a blue dragon do very well but rakan and human with a green dragon is equally as strong mm -hmm. that healing effect in the call of the wild for the human archers gives them that window they need to like pump out the damage without having to worry about morale collapse or being blown out by rufio and then after that it's uh ruby for third position universally and then the yellow dragon's the worst it's terrible <laughs> maybe the next time uh we'll we'll in, in, if you're up for it we can watch a replay together and then you can show me uh if you want to reveal this type of stuff, what do you look for in, in replays and, and kind of walk us through to pick up on some, some of the subtleties? Um, I can, yeah, sure, we can do that. I can tell you just the basics I look for. I, first thing I watch is skill order in the PvP battle. What skills did they use and what order did they try to use them in? And then after I do that, I go back and I check prism locations on heroes, what the prism combos are, and then after that, I kind of dissect their hero placements and dragon placements. All right, guys. So if you guys uh, uh, don't mind, please uh, subscribe. We'll try to bring you, um, I guess, as much good, up to date, and accurate information as, as possible. Um, a lot of a lot of my stuff um, is, if it's really basic, it probably comes from from my mind. Um, and even if it is basic, I'll reach out to people like, like Tain and. Uh, whoever is around this will, willing to help me that I, I reach out to you and uh, they help me so that I can help you guys. So uh, make sure you guys subscribe for, for more. Smash the thumbs up button because uh, Tane's here and uh, it's absolutely awesome. 
uh, in the description of this video and all the videos we have some really cool stuff we have the patreon page which is a wonderful place uh if, if you are enthusiastic with everything and want to further support the channel we have the discord where there's tons of good information we have the facebook page where uh, if you, like the next time we do an interview, if you guys want to help come up with the questions for the interview, uh, go to the Facebook page. We also have the merch store where you can get some beautiful swagger, which I should probably order some. Maybe we'll do like a giveaway or something with, with some merch, but Ooh, yeah. that would be fun. Um, yeah. But thank you for, for coming, Mr. Taint. Pleasure as always. Always like help, helping out and talking to the, the players of AOC. And uh, absolutely, and we will see uh, Mr. Tain, and we'll also see you guys at home uh, sometime soon. T take care, everybody.